Hi guys, hope you're well and welcome back and hello anyone that is new. My name is Ellis, I'm a mum of two boys based here in the UK and I share lots of content over here from lifestyle and cleaning to beauty, fashion and lots of interior related content, hauls, travel and so much more. So if you like that kind of thing, I would love for you to check out some of my other content and subscribe if, if that is your vibe. Um, there's a little red button down below, you know where it is. I would love to have you over here. But today I'm sharing a super duper, yeah I just said super duper, exciting video, um, which is a Disney related video. Oh my gosh, the excitement levels right now are uncontainable. We go to Disney in 59 days at the point of filming this. Yesterday was our 60 day mark and I actually done all of our fast passes yesterday and I'm just so so excited right now. So in today's video, I thought I would share with you some of our Disney dining reservations that we made. So like I said, I have two sons, Clayton and Parker, who are five and two. So if you have children around that sort of age range, this is probably gonna be really helpful for you guys to see what we've booked. And I've booked these in mind of having the kids not being sitting down too long or trying to be entertained during our meal. Obviously, a really sit-down formal restaurant is not going to be the right vibe for my two boisterous boys, and I really wanted to contain as many elements of Disney as possible. Now, we've never been to Disney before. It's been a dream of mine since I was a little girl to go. However, we have been to Disneyland Paris twice in the past two years, and the boys absolutely love it. They always remember stuff, which is kind of what's made us take the plunge to book Walt Disney. So, if you want to see what Disney dining reservations I made and why I made them, then just continue to watch. Okay, so to start with, I'm going to share with you what Disney dining plan we chose. Now, we're actually traveling with my in-laws, so they'll be them, my two sons, and myself and my husband. And we felt that for our family, the deluxe Disney dining plan would work best for us. Now, the reason why we chose this is because you get three credits a day to choose to spend them on either a table service or a quick service meal. Now, our logic at the moment is that I'm actually going to be using Amazon Pantry or something of that sort of type, and I will go into more details about this later down the line, to actually have items delivered to our hotel. And in that, I'm gonna include things like snacks, snack bars, breakfast bars, just like basic necessities that we might want, bottles of water and all things like that. This will actually save us a lot of money in the long run on the boys because the boys eat so much food. I don't know about your kids, but my kids are always hungry. Um, so we're probably gonna do that for a lot of the mornings or for like snacks throughout the day and things like that. So with this plan, you get your three Disney dining credits and you get to choose them however you would like on either a sit down or a table service meal. Now, some of the restaurants out there don't just require one credit, they require two credits. And I will go into that when I speak you through the next part of my bookings that I've made and which restaurants might require that. You also get two snack credits as well. So what that means is you can go around to any of the counters in the park and pick yourself up a snack with those snack credits. Now, this is gonna be great for any of those sweet treats, maybe for breakfast or something like that. And again, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna incorporate that in a second into our daily routine. And then you also get a refillable mug which can be refilled around the parks wherever you may be with whichever they have on offer at that time now the reason why we're doing the amazon pantry is because on some of the days we're obviously going to want lunch and dinner but obviously some of the dinner meals do require or even some of the lunch meals do require those two credits as i mentioned which means that we wouldn't have any credits for breakfast now we can quite happily use our snack credits on those days so it's not to mean that we're going to need loads more credits or anything like that but we've also got to think about the fact that our credits and stuff will have build up on our last day as well and all in between. Okay so now to share with you what I've actually done and I have my computer in front of me because I am one of those people that realise that with Disney you do need to be organised. At first I thought it was going to be a lovely like oh we'll book Disney and we'll go to the parks a bit like we've done Paris and I remember when I've been to Paris in the past people have had itineraries and all sorts and I never really thought that was a necessity but for Walt Disney you want hundred hundred percent need to be organized so I have a spreadsheet of exactly what we're doing I'm it, it, I like to say that it's an organized yet relaxed spreadsheet we do have our dinner reservations in place if we choose to cancel them then obviously we can do um but yeah I have this in place so we actually go in March and on our first day we're going to be flying so we're not going to land in until about 
I think it's about half three or something like that in the afternoon. So by the time that I've calculated that we'll get all of our luggage, we'll make it back to the hotel, both of my sons are gonna have had a really, really long day. And at that point, I think they're gonna be really, really tired. So we're probably not gonna go out for a sit down dinner that evening. And we will probably just look to use some of our snack credits or something like that to grab something, or we'll look to buy something um, when we're out there. Now, the, one of the reasons why we've chose to do that is because that means we can actually conserve those credits and actually then be able to use them during our trip on any meals that may need a higher credit requirement. So on the first full day that we're there, we haven't actually booked anything in for breakfast or lunch. However, we have booked in Mama Melrose for dinner. Now, the reason why we've booked Mama Melrose is because it actually comes with a fantastic dinner package. So what that basically means is at this restaurant, if you book this restaurant and attend by a certain time, you actually have entrance and guaranteed seating into the fantastic show, which you could end up using your fast passes for. Now, Mama Melrose is an Italian restaurant. I think it's gonna be really, really nice food and it's right up our street. So for us, this is a great restaurant. It's very relaxed, yet it will also get us that advanced seating, which I'm really, really confident can't wait to go and see the Fantasmic show. During the show, there's fireworks, there's boats, there's projections, there's characters, there's so much stuff going on. So it's a really good thing to go and see of an evening if you're in Disney. And for us, it was one of the things that was at the top of my list to be able to go and see and do whilst I was out there. And without all those crowds, now we have guaranteed seating through booking Mama Melrose. Now, there are also two other restaurants that you could go to to get your advanced seating for Fantasmic. One is called Hollywood Brown Derby, and the other one is called Hollywood and Vine. However, I really like the feel and the type of food that Mama Melrose had on offer. Italian is right up all of our streets. I also wanna know that Mama Melrose was only one table service credit, as is Hollywood and Vine. However, Hollywood Brown Derby is more of a formal setting and that requires two. The food in there costs a lot more, is a lot more upmarket, should we say? Um, I mean, I'm not a very upmarket person when it comes to food. I am as simple and as basic and I like good, hearty food. I don't know, that's just me. Um, but yeah, so that one requires two table service credits and for me, it wasn't worth it. But what that now means is that we've all saved a fast pass to get into the Fantasmic show and we're not gonna have rubbish seating either, which I'm super excited about. And before I go any further into the reservations that I've made, I wanted to mention another restaurant. Now for us, we've seen a lot of the parades and generally there's a lot of space and they generally do the same thing day in and day out. So I'm not too worried about advanced seating, but for anyone that hasn't been to a parade before, they are amazing. And I know that Walt Disney is gonna be on another level to Disneyland Paris in itself. But what I'm hoping is that having my husband and my father-in-law, if the boys can't see, they can jump on their shoulders or we can get a good space of just being in Magical Kingdom itself as that's where it takes place however there is a restaurant called tony's town square restaurant and that will give you advanced seating if you dine there it will give you advanced seating to actually get good seats to watch the parade so that's another point that i thought i would mention it was something that i'd considered but i just did think we don't really want to waste our credits on that because we have other restaurants that i really want to go to then the next day we'll be spending in the Magical Kingdom and I've made sure that I've organized all of our rides and our days around our meals. So the next day we'll be in the Magical Kingdom and I've actually organized for us to have lunch with Cinderella herself, super excited. So this one is called Cinderella's Royal Table and on entering the castle, you get to meet Cinderella. My boys both love princesses and they are gonna be so excited about this. Now again, this is another great way to meet one of your characters that might be on your list without having to use any of your fast passes for a meet and greet or stand in any lengthy long lines. And so this way we can go in, we can have the most beautiful lunch in Cinderella's castle and get to meet Cinderella herself. Now this one is two table service credits and this is where it comes into play whereby I said that we won't be using all of them for every day because for me that is a lot of credits for lunch and I still generally want a dinner every evening as well. So for lunch this was a really important one for us to do. I really wanted to do it. I know the boys are gonna love it. And so that's why I've kind of swapped out having breakfast and that first day that we arrive and things like that. Now, I also wanna mention that this may not be the most cost-effective way to use your dining credits. Generally, dining credits are better spent on dinner. However, there are some characters that we just want to meet and some meals that we just wanna get in for our dinner time. So we've really kind of made an effort to make sure that we've got a mixture of things that we're doing and that work around our trip as well. 
Now, the next day, we are in the Magical Kingdom again. Now, for the boys, the Magical Kingdom has so many more rides, which is why a lot of our stay is in the Magical Kingdom. And we actually have a lunch reservation at Be Our Guest. Now, you can dine at Be Our Guest for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And the good thing about breakfast and lunch is that it only requires one of your quick service table credits. So it would only use one credit as well. So you don't need to go and spend a ton of credits on them. I believe dining in there of an evening requires two because the beast turns up himself and you don't actually get to see any characters for breakfast or lunch however you do get to see the magnificent ballroom as you walk through and it's just a case of i believe if it's still the same you pick up a little red rose in like this gorgeous like glass i can't remember what, clock is that what they're called clocks i'm sure that's what they're called <laughs> um cloche cloche maybe it's a cloche i can't remember but you pick up one of those gorgeous red roses that's iconic for beauty and the beast and obviously you take that through you take your seats there's a couple of menus to choose from the food looks amazing and i've heard amazing things about it and i'm just really excited to get to experience the castle now, later that day, we're actually dining at San Angel Inn. Now, this is a Mexican cuisine restaurant and we all love Mexican. And I really wanted a good mix of foods and meals that we're really gonna enjoy, that were really laid back, but we're also kind of getting in our character meals and stuff like that as well. Now, like I said, this is Mexican and it's actually based on the Mayan ruins with like the pyramid feel to it and everything like that. And I really can't wait to go there. This only requires one credit as well. So a really good juice to get some really good food inside us um, and just find somewhere a little bit different. Now, the next morning, we actually have a character breakfast, which I'm super excited for. The boys still don't know none of this, so how I'm keeping this under wraps, I don't know. But we have our first character breakfast, which is at the 1900 Park Fair. I believe it's based in the Grand Floridian, and it's the supercalifragilistic breakfast. Now, I'm gonna read it out, but basically, it's a buffet breakfast that you pop in. There's Mickey waffles, omelets, pancakes, all sorts, which I know the boys are going to love. But you also get to meet guests. Now, this is the main reason that drew me to book in this one because this is going to get a lot of our meet and greets and our characters out the way with in the middle of our trip and we won't have to waste any more time so in this not only do you get to see mary poppins which i mean clayton is obsessed with so i'm really hoping she shows up on the day but you also get to see alice in wonderland the mad hatter tigger and winnie the pooh which are some of both the boys favorites as well so this is a really good breakfast again it only requires one credit so you're not using up too much you're going to get a really nice breakfast inside you plus you're going to have that buzz of seeing all of those characters around breakfast which is going to build up the excitement levels before you enter the park but i think it'll be amazing and there'll be so many great pictures to take and then later that day, we then have a reservation for Tusker House. Now for us, it was between Tusker House and Aloha. And so many people rave about Aloha. I know that it's meant to be amazing food. However, I looked at the menu and for me and my family, I just don't think it's very much us. So we decided to go for Tusker House instead, which has an African vibe to it. Now we're actually staying at the Animal Kingdom itself. And this is based inside the Animal Kingdom. And the thing that I like the most about it is that you get to see safari versions of some of the characters so i'm just going to double check but as far as i'm aware you get to see join safari donald duck and friends so it doesn't necessarily specify what other friends are going to turn up but the boys love donald duck and to see him in safari gear i know they're going to love it and again for the food the menu and it being close to our hotel they also have a lot of shows on in the evening at the animal kingdom and we only have one day in the animal kingdom during our stay we're going for eight days in total so because of that i figured that we could actually have dinner and then stay close to our hotel room that night and be able to kind of have a look at a couple of the shows in and around where we are. Now, the next day, we actually don't have any breakfast or lunch reservations. Instead, we just have one dinner reservation for a place called Spitzville, which is in Disney Springs. Now, as far as aware, Disney Springs is where all the shops and that are and the boardwalk and all things like that. If I'm correct in saying so, if I'm not, correct me in the comments below. I've never been. I'm just basing this on my own research that I think I can remember. There's a lot to take in. But Splitsville is basically like an American type cuisine. It's really laid back. It only takes up one table credit. And we're actually going to intertwine this with a game of bowling. We're going to have a really fun, relaxed evening. And you can put bowling there. And I just think it's going to be a really nice way to spend our evening. 
So the next day we've done exactly the same thing again and we have no breakfast or lunch reservations. We don't want to be waking up every single day super duper early, having to get out for breakfast reservations. We kind of want to have a chilled morning. Most of our park tickets, our fast passes, start at 10 o'clock or around that time. So we've got a nice amount of time in the morning to slowly get up. And we figured that we can use our snack credits for breakfast and places like that. I'm pretty sure you can use them in places like Starbucks and there's so many other places. But that is currently on my research list that so once I have done that I'll be sure to share that video with you guys as well but for that evening we just have a dinner reservation which is for the sci-fi drive-in now this was kind of like a must on my list to do it looks amazing you actually all eat inside a like really retro car and I just can't wait I think it's gonna be so much fun as far as I'm aware the portions come up gigantic so you have like huge onion rings and stuff like that it's in a very American diner-esque type place but one of the things that I loved about this is that they actually show screenings of Disney films in the background as well. So it's meant to have the film feel of like a drive-in cinema that was very Americanized. And I think the boys are gonna love it because it hopefully will keep them entertained during dinner. Now, this is just one credit as well. It's a really good way to use it, right up our street with the American food and a really fun dining place. And it's like a once in a lifetime place. Now, on the following day, we actually have Be Our Guest again, but this time for breakfast. And there's a reason why we've done this. We have this reservation at 8 a.m., which is generally before the parks open. Now, with that, what that means is not only do we get a really yummy breakfast, we're not meeting any characters or anything like that. However, it does mean that we have access to the park before everyone else, unless they change their magic hours, which I haven't yet checked. And what that basically means is that we're gonna be in the park before the majority of other people, which means we can get some great pictures, some great shots of the castle and all things like that without hardly anyone else around us, which I think is gonna be great. What that also means is that we are gonna be first in line for those rides that are open, which I'm really, really excited for. And again, I believe that I'm right in saying that once you're in the park for that reservation, you can get to explore the park after your reservation has finished. So we'll be first in line for all of those rides when they open. So I, that is a really, really good way. Again, one credit, doesn't take a lot, a good meal, but advanced access to the park and great family shots, hopefully. Now that evening we then have a dinner reservation and I don't think any trip can really be complete without going to Chef Mickey. I've heard so many amazing things about it. It's just a buffet restaurant, it's nothing fancy that evening, it's gonna be really laid back. However, in that it's an American cuisine again. So I mean, you're going to America, so you're gonna enjoy American food, right? Especially if you're from the UK because obviously we don't get to experience American food all the time. But the reason why we put this is because again, we can meet an abundance of characters. So in this place, you can meet Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, Pluto, Donald Duck, and Goofy. And I just think it's gonna be a really nice place to go and visit with the boys, get them to meet all of their favorite characters at dinner time. I know they're gonna be super excited. Again, because it's a buffet style, it's gonna be really laid back. It's gonna be quite chilled. It's not gonna to be too formal. I think with my sons, they don't have a very long attention span. So things like this are great. And if your children are the same, then obviously restaurants like this are gonna capture them and keep them entertained the whole way through. So hopefully you get to enjoy your meal. And guys, that is the last of my reservations. I haven't got anything else booked. On the last day, we're probably gonna take it really easy, have a few snack credits, maybe have a couple more table service meals, just really kind of see and just go with the flow. We actually leave on that last day. I think we're gonna to plan to leave around two, three o'clock in the afternoon. We've got a couple of fast passes booked in, which I'll be sharing with you in another video, which I'm super excited to share that video. Um, but yeah, that's everything from me. I know there are so many other restaurants. I had so many different recommendations for different places and I feel like if me and Adam are going on our own then my reservation list would be a little bit different to what it is now however I feel like this is going to really suit our family well it's going to give us a massive variety get us to meet and greet so many of the amazing characters give us advanced seating at shows and I didn't realize until I did the research how much went into this like I said and how many different reservations could give you like advanced access so it's definitely worth doing your research. If you've liked this video and would like to see more Disney content, then give this video a big thumbs up. If you're not already, I would love to have you over here on my channel and subscribe. And I will see you all again for another video very shortly. Bye guys.